What fact is common knowledge to people who work in your field, but almost unknown to the rest of the population? If you're putting in new carpet, always go top shelf with the pad. The increase in cost is negligible and the upgrade to feel, usability and endurance of the rug on top will be way better dollar to value ratio than spending on the carpet itself 8 pounds memory foam is maybe 2 bucks a yard more than trash apartment grade stuff, but 10 times better underfoot. Go for the cheapest carpet you can stand, remember, you aren't going to be running your fingers through your house's carpet for more than 3 days after it's installed and put the best damp ad money can buy under it. You'll spend less and it'll feel like you bought $50 a yard carpet. Drowning is silent. I pulled out a kid literally less than a foot away from a large group of adults, and not one of them noticed that his head was totally submerged and that he was struggling. Most Swiss cheeses, Gruyere, Emmentaler, Appenzeler, are lactose-free, as well as any cheese that's been aged at least two years, like Parmigiano Reggiano or an aged Gouda. I work at a cheese shop, and clients are usually surprised when I share that information with them. I wish more people with lactose intolerance knew about it. You cannot go from having black hair to silver or platinum blonde in one sitting. It takes multiple and 9 times out of 10, your hair is fried beyond repair by the end of it. Kim Kardashian or whoever you pinned on your Pinterest page or Instagram is wearing a wig. Just because a disabled child slash person is nonverbal, that doesn't necessarily mean they can't understand everything you're saying. It's crazy how often I have to tell my own staff to watch what they're saying. These kids still get embarrassed or upset if you talk about the massive shit they just took right in front of the whole class. Edit, never thought I'd be saying this, but thank you for the gold kind stranger. The conversation this has caused has been amazing. I've loved reading through the replies and threads, and some of your stories have been really heartwarming. Thanks for making my day Reddit. I'm constantly reminding my staff of this. So frustrating. Just because the kids aren't making eye contact, classic sign of autism, doesn't mean they aren't still listening. Most likely they are listening better when they aren't looking at you because they aren't focusing so hard on maintaining eye contact. Potential cancer cells develop in the human body every day and our immune system efficiently kills them without any trouble and we just go on living our lives like nothing ever happened. Edit. Potential was added to clear up terminology. Many of the cells the immune system eliminates may not have progressed to the point where they could cause disease and there are many other mechanisms through which the body curbs cancer development. We see this in animal models too. Immunodeficient animals develop spontaneous tumors at much higher rates than normal ones do. One of the more fascinating ways this works to me is that almost all your cells express a set of molecules that identifies them itself, but cancer cells can lose this molecule causing them to be eaten or destroyed by immune cells. This is also why many advanced tumors have anti-inflammatory mechanisms. They would never have gotten so advanced otherwise. Many new tumor therapies are immune based, nearly every major pharma company is investing in it. It has the potential to be game changing. This process starts on day 4 of water fasting, no food just water. It also greatly reduces the risk of Alzheimer's and rejuvenates your immune system. There are crazy benefits to fasting and everyone should be doing it on the regular. We've only been eating 3 meals a day for the last 200 to 300 years and we started because the aristocracy did it and we wanted to be more like them. Our bodies are built for fasting, not eating all the time. I can see how this could come off as bullshit, especially with phrases like complete rejuvenation, but there are, are studies being done about the modes in which our bodies behave, and the benefits it can have on the body, although not quite to the level described above. Check out the work of Dr. Walter Lango, if you're interested to learn more. From what I've researched, there's promising evidence to show the benefits of fasting and autophagy in bacteria and mice, but there haven't been enough large-scale clinical trials in humans. It's interesting stuff, and, immo, it's worth the time looking into for you to come to your own conclusions. If it makes you feel any better, or relieves any worry, my dad had two liver transplants. I know it's a different organ, but still. Back in 2007, and has been on immunosuppressants ever since then. He's going to be 66 this year and he's healthier now than he was in 2000. 
just need to go to all of your follow up and routine doctor appointments and get all the blood work needed done. Don't be afraid to say if anything feels off and chart any medications you take. My dad keeps a clipboard with tabled papers of his meds, the current dosage, time taken, his weight for the day, etc. He's been making these charts ever since 2007 and they've been helpful when an adjustment to medication was made and there was an undesired side effect. He'd bring his charts in and discuss them with his doctor and they would see what they could adjust if needed. I wish you the best. I highly recommend finding support from at least one other transplant patient as well. My dad made friends with someone who was also on the brink as he was and it really helped to make phone calls or send emails to each other since they could relate, vent, and cheer each other on. Yes, that is one of the better examples, good find. To be honest it is a very difficult thing to study directly given that longitudinal studies on living organisms is a tricky thing especially on a cellular level. It's been well proven through thousands of papers that the immune system is constantly surveying and eliminating cancer cells. In fact many of the new therapies coming into the market now are based on this principle and one of the earlier scientists in the field James Allison just won the Nobel Prize this year. As for the idea that these precancerous cells are developing every day, I believe this idea originally came about based on mathematical models of the error rate in DNA replication multiplied by the number of cell divisions a day. Statistically, mutations in cancer-promoting genes would be a daily occurrence. This is covered in many textbooks. Molecular Biology of the Cell has a particularly good chapter on cancer that I'd recommend. Most cancers, more than 50%, occur when a certain gen, p53 or tp53, defuncts due to a mutation. When a cell divides, the DNA is copied. This coping doesn't happen without mistakes. The function of the tp53 gen is to detect flaws in the DNA sequence and fix them. When this gen is damaged, more mutations occur, but the mistakes go uncorrected a new cell, with the copied DNA full of mistakes, will have many more mutations. TP53 isn't the only gen responsible for repairing the DNA, BRCA1 and BRCA2 also have this function. I'm sorry but this statement is totally incorrect. Our DNA is subjected to mutagens every day, and mutations that are repaired occur every day. But it is entirely untrue to say that enough mutations occur to create actual cancer cells every day, and that it is our immune system that sees them and kills them. No. Our cells have intrinsic DBA repair mechanisms. And if it is unable to repair damaged DNA, a cell will send out an eat me signal to the immune system. Even if enough lasting mutations occur to mess with a cell's DNA repair mechanisms and its eat me signaling, it's still not classified as a cancer cells. Tumor cell maybe. Please retract your statement. You have almost 10k plus people reading wrong information. Not my current field, but when I worked at Starbucks not a lot of people understood that a larger espresso drink does not always equals more caffeine. A tall drink has one shot, grand has two, and a venti also has two, unless it's iced, and then it gets a third shot. So many times customers would order a grand lat and say you know what, you'd better make that a venti, I can use the extra caffeine when in fact the larger size is just more diluted with milk. If you are looking for more caffeine, a drip coffee is going to be the most bang for your buck. Also, this seems really obvious, but a lot of people would get upset when they ordered a flavored coffee and saw that I would put syrup in it. No, coffee beans do not naturally come in caramel, vanilla, toffee nut, raspberry etc flavor. I work in Parkinson's disease research. For Parkinson's it's loss of smell, REM sleep disturbances and constipation. These can start up to 20 years before motor symptoms develop. There is currently no treatment to stop or slow the progression of the disease. Edit. As a lot of people are asking I'll add this reply to another comment here. Just to clarify. Having loss of smell or any of the other non-motor symptoms doesn't mean that you will get Parkinson's. There are also lots of cases where Parkinson's occurs without these symptoms. Finally, the symptoms could occur 20 years before or two. It's a very complicated disease with many different potential genetic and environmental causal factors. Edit 2. If you are experiencing any of these symptoms and are concerned you should consult your doctor, it's far more likely that there is a cause other than Parkinson's. 
There is a surprising amount of infrastructure under your feet. You'd be surprised how much public utility runs underneath private property. Always call before you dig. We had a garden in our backyard growing up. I used to dig in the spots where my mom didn't have any plants growing. I decided one morning that I was going to dig to China. I was young, okay, and kept going until I hit a thick black cord. I stabbed at it with the shovel and saw all sorts of colors inside it. I thought I'd found some treasure, but what I was actually looking at was dozens of individual wires inside the cord, and what I'd done was take out the cable TV for the entire street. Edit, this happened in like 1985. That's why there was static on the TV, and there was no fiber involved. If it was full of colored wires, it was probably a telephone cable, and yeah, cutting through that would be a major disruption to your neighbors. 